It's time for you to visit space in the game Moon by Sinister Fish. This is their third game in their series, from villagers to streets, and now this one here, in which players are going to attempt to build moon bases. Take your character, take your starting base, and begin to build in this drafting game. Players are going to be giving resources to start the game off, as well as a number of cards in their hand that they'll use to place down on their base. They could be blue or yellow structures, or pink or gray, or even red. And they're they're going to construct all the cards they can while drafting up to the point where they start to produce again. And they'll do this three times. They're called eras. And in an era, you'll produce as much as you can, gain as many points as you can, and then start to draft. At the end of the game, whoever has the most points is going to be the winner, and points is calculated by happiness. It is a 2-5 to five player game with a solo mode, takes about 45 minutes to play, and is for ages 13 and up. Let's take a look at it. Setting up the game Moon is quite simple. Based on the number of players in the game will determine what cards are going to be added to the game mode, and it will tell you on the middle left-hand side of the cards, a plus 3, plus 4, that equals the number of players playing the game. 3 or more players, add the plus 3 cards. 4 or more, 2 or more, do the same. And basically you're going to be creating this layout, and I'll explain it. First thing is you'll take all the pieces or tokens and place them into their areas. You're going to have your hearts, which is going to be basically be your victory points. You will have your rovers as well as your ships if you're playing the expansion Valkyrie. And then you'll have your resources, and there are four different types. Green, yellow, blue, and gray. Um, and you just put them all in there. They're double-sided. One side will have three resources of that type, and the other side will have one. Uh, then the, you're going to have these guys. These guys are like your achievements you can get throughout the game, and based on the number of players will be how many there are. And there are three categories. We'll talk about a two-player game here. Uh, in a two-player game, you'll get three of each type, randomly distributed. Uh, three bronze, three silver, and three gold. Uh, then you're going to be setting up the decks. Uh, each of these colors are two separate deck types. Uh, these ones here are going to be your uh, expedition cards. These are basically going to be your character cards that you use for each of the different three draft phases or eras. Um, and you start with having the first player take the first expedition card and every other player for each era taking a random one from the deck. And they do different things. Uh, and you'll shuffle each of these decks into three different categories, one, two, and three, and place them down. And the same is said for structures in the exact same way, but you'll take cards out if it's for a lower player count or add cards for a higher player count. And these are called structure cards. These are cards that are going to be building that will have requirements as well as resource costs, how many are in the deck, what you will get, and where you can place rovers down, as well as any special abilities that the cards have. Place them down in these three decks and shuffle them as well. Uh, the main game board. The main game board is basically where you're going to be ending an era on. This is like the different flags that you'll start with, and there are three eras, so you'll put on the hearts threes, set aside the fours, and the fives for the second and third era. And uh, at the end of the round, this is where you're going to be gathering victory points so, uh, for whoever has the most of these flags. Uh, and it'll calculate as well, like, how many card points you will get for each hearts on your card, as well as uh, points you can gather for the excitement level, which starts at three and goes to two, and then finally one. Uh, finally, there is your main play area. This is your player a tableau area. You'll start with the expedition that you were given, whether it be the first one or a random one from the deck. Your base, as well as the resource that the base has, demonstrated on the left-hand side of the card. And your era card, your summary card, your turn sequence card. It's a front and back card that's used to explain how your turns work and how the eras work. After that, you're basically ready to go. Uh, I won't discuss the uh, expansion for the game. I'll let you go ahead and take a peek at that and determine if it's something you want to pick up. But we will go into detail of how, how to play the main game, as well as, of course, my review. The game moon is done in eras. Eras are like rounds. You will do one round, and the next, and the next. And they're all simultaneous rounds, with each player having unique turns. Uh, on era one, the first thing that happens is you're going to produce. Anything that you have on your blue base, or eventually in later rounds or eras, you will have additional cards, you will basically accumulate. In this case here, my Aitken base is going to have one water, so I will simply produce that. Also, don't I, don't, I want to forget, I forgot to mention the setup, but you also get two of these rovers to start the game with. Uh, these guys you can use um, on your opponent's locations to kind of either gain a benefit uh, for the turn, whether it be a flag, or a resource uh, based on the location you place on on your opponent's side and these can be basically passed back and forth between the players uh, and of course production's simple as far as gathering those resources as well maybe even getting victory points and of course taking your rovers off of your uh, base then you'll move into construction phase and in construction phase each player is going to get a number of cards in their hand and I believe for a two-player game you're going to get eight cards 
and each player is going to get eight cards from the first deck, Era 1 deck. Um, actually, additionally, each player is going to get an Era 1 Expedition if they don't have one. The first player will always start with this first Expedition, but each other player is going to get one of these guys with their own unique special ability. Uh, in the construction phase, you're going to have a hand of cards, these guys here, and they are going to have a range of different types. Uh, and these types are going to either be placed on the left or right hand side of your board or off of your board. Blue on the left, yellow on the right, and everything else off to the side. Your cards are basically all going to similarly fu function the same way. The top left is how many cards, the right hand side is the resources and flags needed. Uh, the bottom is going to explain your location. You can place some, or somebody else can place a rover and then the, what you get. In this case here, this is a red food flag and this is what I would get if I spent one food to build it onto my base. On your turn, you can do a number of different things, and it'll tell you on your little cheat sheet here what you can do on your turn sequence. Uh, you can build or assimilate. Building is simply spending resources if they're required or having the appropriate flags to place uh, one of these cards down onto your base. Uh, to assimilate, you look at your card on the bottom left hand corner right above the Land Rover space and you can discard it next to the trash symbol to gain a benefit. You'll just put it in the discard pile uh, next to the number one era deck and gain the benefit. In this case it would be one energy for me. I only do that if I have nothing else to do or if I can find a way to score a bunch of points with it. Uh, another thing you can do other than just build one thing is you could actually take your rover and you can place it down on anybody else's rover space and gain the benefit. If it's a flag, it's a one-time use, so I can place it on your blue flag to gain that flag for this round, which will hopefully allow me to play a card maybe in my hand that requires a blue flag. I could also use it to put it on a location that has energy or some type of resource to gain that many resources of, this, of the resource adjacent to the rover. Another thing I can do is if I have, for instance, a, a, a pink card, uh, those cards basically flip, I'm able to flip one of those cards on my side of the field once per turn in a given round. And then the last thing that you can do is you can take one of these objectives or achievements. If, for instance, I have three identical flags, I could take this one here. Or maybe I have one of each resource, I could take this one here. And you could take them as soon as you're able to earn them. Uh, bronze, silver, and gold just means that the silver ones are more difficult than the bronze ones, and the gold are more difficult than the silver. Having two or more blue structures that contain three production symbols is very difficult to obtain and only likely to be gathered in the era three for the most part, uh, and so whoever can get this one is likely going to get it later in the game. And they all have ongoing abilities uh, or win claimed abilities. Uh, ongoing just take place whenever they say they take place, and win claimed is when you put them down on the field. But basically, once you have built one card and done any of that extra stuff, you will pass. And the next player will get a chance to go. And it will continue going until everybody has gotten to place one card down and done all the rest of their actions. I mean, you might even get a bonus action from your specific expedition card. Once everybody has placed one of their cards down, then the hand is going to pass. And not only the hand, but your expedition, your character, will pass along with it. And then each player is going to do the same passing, and then you'll be getting a new expedition, a new set of cards, and playing them out once again. In a two-player game, the first player does not change or rotate until the next era, but in every other player game, three, four, or five, each, the first player is going to rotate by one based on whoever has the first expedition card. Um, and that's how the game works. You'll go through that until all of your, your cards have been empty, in which case you're going to have a bunch of new cards out on the field. So in this case, I'll just put an example of my base now having a bunch of additional resources and a bunch of additional flags. And the new era is going to begin. So maybe I played all that stuff and this guy got, got, got discarded. In the new era, you'll be taking off any rovers that your opponents placed on your base areas. You're going to be gathering um, during the production phase all the resources that you have, flipping over any cards that you might have put face down, and then uh, everybody's going to get the new expedition characters with unique new abilities, as well as new cards from the next era deck. And these cards are going to be stronger than the previous era's cards, but 
they're also going to cost more. Now instead of being either free or costing one resource or a flag, these guys can range from costing up to two resources or a resource and a flag and so on and so forth. Up until you get to the last era and you finish the game off. Um, I want to mention too, each, uh, at the end of every single round, there's a scoring phase too. Uh, in the scoring phase, I'll take a look at this here for you. Uh, after you have finished an era, um, and before you move on to the next deck, you are going to be scoring points based on how well you did with your flags. You'll look at these areas here and you'll determine who has the most flags. And I have one of each of these four flags. If I am tied with another player, then whoever has the most rovers will take it and otherwise it gets discarded. And you're gonna be passing out these hearts as victory points for each of these flags here. You'll check to see if any of your cards have any uh, hearts on them as well to score you points. And then finally, if you ever have cards that give you points for excitement value, you'll go ahead and gain that many based on the number stacked here. Uh, and when, before the next round begins, you'll remove one excitement. You will add new hearts to this location based on the era. Three for one, four for two, and five for three. And then that will end your scoring. You might get additional scoring for any cards on your field, or of course, even potentially these uh, objective cards slash achievement marker cards. And that is how the game goes. Go through the production, uh, oh, sorry, yeah, go produce, and then go ahead and take your turn by constructing. And then finally you will score on this thing here and move on to the next era, produce, construct, and score and finally whoever has the most points or happiness in their base is going to be the winner of the game moon okay let's talk about it as i played moon the first thing that came to my head was it's a wonderful world by lucky duck games uh, this game plays very similar to that this is a drafting game this is a building game this gives you resources and you use the resources to translate them into buildings which will build off of your base and in all of those instances it's very similar uh, the difference in this game comes in the fact that now you're going to be including unique new abilities that are going to progress you throughout the game that change from era to era. Um, you're also going to be getting a number of cards set aside in different decks as opposed to It's a Wonderful World where sometimes you can't build a card and so you're going to just discard it. This game kind of sets you up uh, for more success. You're guaranteed to be able to build most of the cards in the deck one when you're in era one and same for deck two and deck three in those eras because you've slowly built up from round to round. Around. Additionally, having these different objectives kind of simulates when you can really get them, when it's likely to, but it doesn't also prevent you from getting the more difficult ones if you're able to earlier. Um, and it also gives you something else to achieve. Additionally, too, with this game, a unique aspect are these rovers here, being able to pass the rovers out um, on other players like locations and then being able to gain the benefit of that location for either a turn or as a resource is useful and can come in handy. However, rovers are very useful as well because they're tiebreakers and you might lose out on scoring one of the flags if you no longer have the most rovers. So you have to make these decisions with these little guys uh, very, very um, carefully. Uh, as well as, of course, the ability to gain additional rovers from discarding cards. There's a whole bunch of ways you can kind of manipulate your game board. It also comes in with some unique little twists and turns like having the gray cards that give you just straight up victory points that are kind of set aside so you're not actually only building on your base and pink cards that are like one-time use abilities for each of the different eras thusly you can use one up to three times if you get it during the first phase but most of the time you're um you're only going to be able to uh, get them in the second and third era the first one has a few but they are i believe limited uh one two three there's four of them so if you're really lucky you might be able to get two uh, the game's quality is there. All the art is really cool. It's kind of like it's kind of like fun space Futuristic and it's got things like a trailer park in space all the way up to just a toilet or a lab or an LED garden Etc, etc, but I really really like the stylization of this game It felt like I was building my base on the moon, which is exactly what the game is looking for you to do um, I also appreciate the unique special abilities that each of the expedition cards can give you being able to just cut a card and replace it with a new one from the top of the deck can come in handy and choosing when to do that is important. Do I want to help myself by discarding a card and getting a new one or should I play my card that I want from my hand 
and discard a card I think my opponent might want. And so each of these kind of presents itself with a new style of gameplay. And the fact that each of them are kind of represented throughout each of the rounds, and there's quite a few of them, it drastically changes how you play the game. So not only do the decks do that, but also the expedition cards giving you unique benefits and potentially even high scoring possibilities. And then of course your achievements. These things push you to do certain things in the game, uh, but they're at a cost to you and you have to kind of be aware of what they're gonna do when you gain them and is it worth it for you to go for those specific things. One of them might give you points for having the most rovers or having rovers on your locations. And if you don't have that, it might not be worth going to as a goal if no one's willing to place rovers on your space. Might be more better to more beneficial to gain gray cards that just give you straight points or cards that give you a benefit when you score a number of flags of all the different colors. And it's really up to you how you want to play each and every one of these games that changes as of the flow of the game. Uh, this game also has kind of a cool flow to it where sometimes somebody's winning and then it can come back to your favor and back and forth. There are unique cards like Obelisk that like, like you skip a turn so that you can play two cards on the next turn, which can be beneficial if you know that this hand does not present anything valuable, or if you're going to the next era in the next phase, and it's good to save a card like that because the next era is always better cards. So you can gain a better benefit um, while potentially even giving somebody that obelisk that they can use on the third era. And so there's always these difficult choices to make in the game while it being very simple. The idea of the game is getting money, using that money to build stuff, and then if you have any additional things you can do, like gaining these guys or placing these guys or using your special ability or flipping a card, you can do that as well. But mainly it's just produce, build up until all the cards are gone, and then score and check whoever has the most flags. Flags are important, but they're not the most important thing. There's a ton of different ways in which you can go about the game. Scoring points from all the different air angles and possibilities can net you the win at the end of the game, Moon. Solid art, solid construction. This is my second uh, favorite game and it might even be tied for first with villagers. They're both really close as to the type of tableau management I like. I'm better at this game so I'll probably have to give it to this one just because I like to win in addition. Um, and Kelly usually beats me with villagers. But yes, Moon is an excellent, excellent tableau management game. I love It's a Wonderful World and this gives that vibe off really, really heavily. And it's yet different enough with other unique qualities to it that It's a Wonderful World doesn't have while lacking in some of the qualities that It's a Wonderful World has, so I can keep both of them on the same shelf and be happy with that. Yes, Moon, excellent game. Check it out, link in the description if you're interested. Thank you guys for watching with our Unfiltered Gamer board game review of the game Moon by Sinister Fish. If you're interested in this game, like I said, there is a link down below in the description. And if you're feeling ex extra cheeky right now, you can go ahead and hit that subscribe button and the bell notification as well. Um, I, most It's a Wonderful World fans are gonna love this type of a game, I think. I'm gonna have to talk to my, my, my editor, Brian, about this game as well, because he loves that game. And also, this is one of those games I know I'm specifically keeping um, because my wife is gonna put it right next to her other two Sinister Fish games, because she really, really enjoys their games, and the quality just, it's so top-notch. Uh, live streams every Wednesday and Sunday, Wednesday, 6.30 p.m. PST and whatnot, and on Sunday, it is on Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, and X, X now. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. And as always, I look forward to heading to the moon and building a base with you next time.